There are some pretty deep mixed messages coming out of mainstream and government coverage of the Freedom Convoy down in Ottawa. On one hand, they continually say over and over and over again how this is a very volatile event, which is very threatening, perhaps very, very dangerous. They're telling the uh, Ottawa citizens not to go into the city to avoid it because, um, you know, that there, there's so much going on down there. This has been causing a number of local businesses down there to actually close. Again, not because the convoy is blocking routes into the city, but because the media keeps telling everybody to avoid going into the city and is telling the business owners themselves that they should be worried about what's happening with the convoy. Yet at the same time, the police is taking credit for having not had a single bad incident occur thus far. They have been an incredible group of individuals who kept this city safe during a situation that could have become riotous. It could have led to significant and severe injuries, and it could have led to the loss of life. None of that has occurred over the last four days. Let me repeat, no injuries, no deaths, no riots in the last four days in the nation's capital, despite the fact that we have a global cause, national protest, tens of thousands of individuals from a wide variety of causes who have gathered to actively demonstrate 24 hours a day for the last four days. All of that coupled with thousands of heavy trucks, SUVs and cars driving into the city and congregating in the core of this city. 24 hours a day for four days a week. So again, no injuries, no deaths, no riots since this thing has begun. And yet that somehow was what the government and what law enforcement kept expecting was going to happen. I'm not sure where they were getting that perspective from per se, but what is becoming a little bit sort of, I guess, distressing about some of the situation, the way government is talking about it, the way, you know, CTV and CBC, some of the major news organizations in Canada have been talking about this, is they're literally giving citizens a tiny, maybe half percent or one percent of what the story on the ground actually looks like. They continually show, you know, the one instance where something, you know, not so favorable happens. They're putting a ton of effort into making people's standard for what is a bad thing lower and lower and lower so that they'll accept things that aren't that bad as terrible things. You know, for an example, um, we keep hearing that, you know, there's all this violence and distress and all these bad things going on. Meanwhile, it's like, hey, there was a, a flag hung on, on Terry Fox, something that we've had people on the ground who live in Ottawa tell us that, yes, people put hats on and flags on Terry, on Terry Fox's monument even during Canada Day sometimes. This is not necessarily a new thing. But we, we you know, we're forgetting what a violent, what a bad protest actually looks like where people are throwing bricks through windows and smashing buildings and causing tons of destruction all over the place. This is something that is unfavorable. This is something that is dangerous. This is something that is bad. I've attended protests where entire cars are on fire and you can hear, you know, the bullets inside police cars actually heating and, and blowing off, right? These are things that you witness and you're like, yeah, this is a bit of a, of a tricky situation. Yet the media is trying to frame this peaceful protest that is, we're being told by everybody that attends, including our own coverage on the ground, it literally seems like a Woodstocky vibe party, and even the police on the ground agree with this sentiment. Down here with a police officer in Ottawa, how you doing today? Doing great. How's it been down here? Uh, nothing but good. People are super good. The truckers have been uh, having a good time. They've been getting their point across. And you know what? It's a beautiful city that we're in, and uh, they can't ignore all of this, right? Absolutely. Oh, thank you very much. How's it been? Hey, buddy. It's been good, man. Peaceful. People are in a great mood. That's what I'm talking about. Always supportive of people exercising their democratic rights to peacefully protest. Much appreciated. Stay thank you. Safe out there. Thank you. So why? Why is the media and the government working so hard to convince Canadians and people around the world that this event is something that it is not? Well, here's where we have to go back to the, the sad part of this entire thing, which is that typically here in Canada, people are very happy about, you know, the, the culture here in Canada. You know, it's very peaceful. People are very uh, united in, in, in many ways. It's very different from some of the cultures that we see of political bashing that goes on amongst citizens. That isn't a huge thing here. Uh, people are very kind to one another. They apologize to each other. Isn't that the joke that we always hear all the time about Canada? And typically, you know, 
Politicians are celebrating that fact. They're talking about the beauty of the culture of Canada. And yet, although that culture is literally existent, perhaps even on steroids down at this event, politicians continually talk about how this is something that's terrible. Instead of seeing what is actually happening, the spirit, the beauty, the humanity of it, leaders have chosen to avoid all of that and to instead focus on something that's not true, that these people are dangerous, that these people are irresponsible, and that they have unacceptable views. This is literally leadership turning on its own citizens. And why are they doing it? Why is this happening? Well, one of the ways I keep coming back to is at the end of the day, governments got their backs against the wall right now, right? They've been doing something that millions and millions of Canadians don't support. Remember, the vast majority of Canada and its citizens voted not to have Trudeau as a prime minister. The only reason why he's a prime minister is because of the way the electoral system works here, which you could say is heavily flawed. Now, the reality of the situation though is people don't support what they're doing. And instead of the government coming up with humility and saying, look, we made mistakes. We were not following the science before per se, but now we have a clear picture and we're going to change the way we're moving things forward. Instead of admitting to the mistakes that were being made and, and, and some of the wrongs that have happened, they're going on the attack, trying to protect their ego, trying to protect their, their, the vision of, of who they truly are. At some point or another, we've all tried to protect ourselves when we're wrong. We know what that looks like. We know what that feels like. We know what oftentimes we're willing to do to protect our, our, the, the perspective that people have of us when we're wrong. Now, oftentimes we come to our senses a couple days later, maybe a week later, and we realize, you know what, we weren't quite acting properly and, and we go and apologize or we come clean. So in some ways, I think we can all feel likely what the culture inside Trudeau's government feels right now. They're in protection mode. They feel fearful. They feel worried about, you know, having to come clean about a lot of the stuff that they've been doing that literally does scientifically make no sense. Keep in mind, countries all around the world every day are dropping vaccine mandates in their countries based on the fact that the mandates do not follow the science. It does not make sense to continually mandate vaccinations for this virus. Is the Trudeau government going to have the courage and humility to admit truth to its citizens? I don't know, but the reality of the situation is people are tired and they're fed up with everything that has been going on for the last two years. And they're sitting down there making sure that the government is held accountable for the mistakes that it has made.